For centuries, we have nurtured bonds with them, ties that continue to evolve in our globalized world. In the United States alone, there are over 9 million horses and nearly 5 million professionals who rely on their partnerships with these graceful creatures. From the open range to the racetrack, horses are an integral part of both our history and our future. Because horses have helped us to reach our potential, the time has come for us to give back to our unwavering companions. In the heart of the Rocky Mountain West, Colorado State University is home to the world's foremost programs for equine medicine and science. CSU's veterinarians, scientists, and educators are dedicated to preserving our connection with horses. I bought Regulus almost 10 years ago. For me, he's definitely been the horse of a lifetime. You know, he's, he's incredible. I have more of a connection to him than I have ever had to any animal. I essentially retired him for me last fall. He had an injury to his left front um, tendon sheath and decided that he probably wasn't going to do what I needed him to do at the Grand Prix level. So now I'm taking him back again and we're trying to rehab him again and get him going. Come on. Positive or bad, I think it's hawks or something. I'm sure they are. I don't even remember when they did a hawk. Especially coming back, you know. You know, it's a pretty engaged process. Yeah, you get a little anxious with them. You want to make sure that what you see is right, the diagnosis is correct. You know, you got everything covered in order that, you know, they can step him up. Really? It's always an active conversation about where are you, you know, where is he, how's he doing, things like that. It's a dynamic so, thing. And maybe what I'll do is, um, when Dora's done injecting that other one, I'll have her go ahead and start x-raying his feet. Um, we'll go from there. Okay. So, right. It's been very, very hard. I thought that this horse's career was over so many times, I don't even know. And it's, he's hard to stay away from. So, you know, as long as, as He's mine. I think that I'm going to be the one on his back, and I think he has such a big heart. I think that if he's physically at all capable of coming back, I think for me, he has the will to do it. A horse's leg is much like an airplane wing that fails. It's not an acute type of incident. You have fatigue over the life of that wing that then that fatigue coalesces and it breaks. And what we're trying to do is identify that early. CSU veterinarians like Dr. Chris Kauchek use biomechanical modeling technologies to better understand what leads to injuries in horses. So this is the gait analysis lab. There's horse plates that are in the floor that the horses can trot over and that'll basically measure how much force they use when they're landing. And then there's also these high-speed cameras. We have eight of them. And those are used to capture the motion at a very high frame rate. So then you can slow that down and do kinematic analysis. So you can use the stick figures and the three-dimensional motion analysis to characterize how the horse is moving. This horse will be 1,200 to 1,400 pounds, running at 50 miles an hour on a leg that's no bigger than my wrist is. When we calculate the forces through those joints, at a trot at least, they'll be upwards of four times their body weight. The horse is a bit of a perfect model. We've had a number of Companies come to us wanting to test various cartilage implants, and a lot of those have led to you know, FDA approval, and we've done the proof of principle here, worked well in the horse, and then it's gone on and worked um, in people. 
and we do a lot of contract work for human products. But it has to have some ability to have an influence in the horse, because that's what we do. While the Orthopedic Research Center has been responsible for multiple discoveries that have advanced medical knowledge for both humans and horses, the faculty is also responsible for training the next generation of veterinarians and equine professionals. Our goal is to provide uh, an excellent education. And uh, we are continually looking at industry needs. We're continually looking at scientific breakthroughs and making sure our curriculum stays up with the needs uh, of our students and their future careers. The second thing is that we are focusing on looking at career opportunities for these students in the equine industry and make sure that they have the experiential education to get placed out in industry. CSU works closely with ranches around the United States to provide cutting-edge orthopedic procedures and reproductive services that help maintain the highest caliber of ranch horses. My mom teases I wore spurs to kindergarten my first day. Somehow I always wanted to be a cowboy and I just never grew out of it. And my parents were pretty adamant that I needed to get a college education. We looked at Colorado State and so I ended up enrolling into their equine science program and finishing a four-year Bachelor's of Science in Equine Science. I think it's really difficult to call yourself a cowboy in this day and age because when you say a cowboy, most people think of like a shoot 'em up Western. They don't actually really realize that people do this day in and day out and there's just an infinite amount of knowledge. It's a lifetime. And that's the really great part about CSU is it does allow people to get those experiences and go, okay, I, I think I can figure out how to do this. To then go and have a really cool career in a really, really neat industry. I really love this lifestyle. We have basically four businesses. We've got our, our cattle business, our horse business, uh, our farming, and our outfitting. Our objective with our horses is to raise the, uh, the very best possible ranch horses. You know, whether they're, they're calving or whether we're, we're driving cattle from one pasture to the next, you know, you need a real trustworthy, reliable mount. Our relationship with uh, CSU plays a very important part. It's really a work with relationship that uh, has gone way beyond what I'd hoped it would. And so, I mean, I, I couldn't be happier. Wagon Hound is a great partner here at Colorado State University. Art and I have known each other for a very long period of time. I initially got them involved in the uh, undergraduate program. In addition to that, started providing some uh, services in orthopedics. And then about three years ago, I started doing more uh, equine reproduction for them. At the Equine Reproduction Laboratory, veterinarians work with their clients' horses in controlled breeding environments to ensure the safety of their horses and the legacy of their bloodlines. A lot of what we do here is translational medicine where we take techniques that have been developed for use in the horse. That technology is often then transferred to the human reproduction world If a couple wanted to have children, but were not able to, it can be emotionally difficult for them. They may go seek advice from a, a human reproduction specialist to determine if it's possible for them to have a baby. We are essentially the same thing for horses. And in our eyes, it's the same level of excitement to get a live, healthy foal for a horse owner. Intracytoplasmic sperm injection, or ICSI, is CSU's groundbreaking and original reproductive process for mares that have been unable to generate a pregnancy on their own. When we look at these older mares, they may only have one follicle that's able to donate an oocyte in the entire breeding season. So we may only get one option to do this single ICSI procedure.
Joanne, our technician, is selecting the sperm and aspirating them up into this injection pipette. Joanne's trying to position the polar body towards the top, so that way uh, it's the, the normal classification for injection of oocytes. And then she injects into the oocyte, and fertilization has just occurred in culture. Oftentimes there is a lot of pressure, but it's extremely rewarding when we're able to get a pregnancy for that client and, and see that full going and competing in the shows in two or three years and, and knowing that we were able to provide uh, that full for the client. Throughout their lives, horses can face a variety of health concerns, some of which require immediate medical attention. In particular, horses are prone to developing prolonged states of colic or severe abdominal pain caused by intestinal displacement. This condition can be fatal if not treated in time. The exact causes of colic can vary, but it is estimated that 64,000 horses may die from colic-related complications each year. His name is Ollie, and I rode him this morning, and he was fine. And then I, he had normal appetite; he just didn't drink any water. And then I came back to the barn, and he was laying down, rolling and sweating. So I don't know where it came from; it just came out of nowhere. Throughout the course of his stay, he just got more increasingly uncomfortable. Uh, I gave him a potent sedative and uh, pain medication, and he didn't respond as long as he should have. And because of that, then we we recommend surgery. When we got into surgery, he actually had progressed from just a displaced colon to a twist, where it had twisted on itself. So in surgery, we untwisted that intestine. Um, we always check everything else out that's there, just to make sure that nothing is, else is abnormal. And then close his incision and then let him recover from anesthesia. I think people come to us because you're not coming for one person. You're coming to be treated as a whole team trying to help treat your horse. And we're really lucky to have all these dedicated faculty members that have a lot of experience. And I, I think that that word gets out, and that's why, why people come. Known for treating horses with colic, CSU continues to pursue new surgical techniques in order to further improve treatment options and their understanding of the disease. time I made the decision that I wanted to get into surgery, they were just starting to save horses with colic. Normally you just had to put them down. And so even though I ended up in orthopedics primarily, uh, the initial attraction was doing abdominal surgery on horses and saving their lives. As director of the Orthopedic Research Center, Dr. Wayne McElraith is a pioneer in the field of equine medicine, which he continues to advance to this day. In the 1980s, Dr. McElroy successfully translated arthroscopic procedures from humans to horses, reducing the once lengthy recovery time in surgical procedures. The arthroscope initially was used diagnostically to go into the knee, you know, because you've just got that little hole, look around, decide what you actually had, and then they would open the joint up if there was something that they could fix surgically. And because of the similarity between equine joints and human joints, we now got collaboration with four National Institute of Health grants. And so it's really exciting because we're already putting some of those techniques into effect. Numerous procedures for human orthopedics have been derived from the knowledge and techniques Dr. McElraith and CSU veterinarians originally developed for the horse. 
I've always loved horses, and I used to ride every chance I could get if I could find a horse to ride. In a skiing accident, both my husband and I have torn our ACL. I had the old style technique uh, of repairing it, and uh, it took me months and months to rehabilitate my knee. When my husband did his ACL, the basic technique came from CSU research to use for horses. So my husband had his ACL repaired. The doctor told him that he was able to get up and walk on it the same day as the surgery. And then, of course, he was back skiing the next winter. It just shows you how fast, with the new technique, they could repair a knee. There was a transition in human from where they developed the techniques where you make another hole and you bring the instrument in and you get the instrument and the, your visual field and the, and the problem, the chip fragment or whatever it is, in the same position and you can operate it so you don't have to open up the joint, you don't have that big incision in the healing thing. Thanks to Dr. McElroy's innovations with arthroscopic procedures, racehorses that were once lost to injuries are now able to make full recoveries both on and off the track. I started training quarter horses in my early 20s. My father was also a quarter horse trainer, so I've been around the business ever since I was about five years old. Once you become a horse person, you, you're almost, you're always a horse person. You, you get the love of horses in, in your blood and it's kind of something that kind of sticks with you. While the horses having racing careers, they sustain injuries from bone chips to cartilage damage to, to ligament damage. Dr. McElraith, he is my go-to guy whenever I have any kind of an injury with any of my horses that requires arthroscopic surgery or any other kind of surgery. My success rate of bringing the horses back after surgery and competing to full competition has been very good with Dr. McElraith. It's a great thrill for all these people and uh, there's nothing more exciting than when you go into that winter circle. The, the, the thrill, you get about a 20 second thrill that money can't buy. The veterinarians at CSU continue their search for the most effective medical procedures available to treat their equine patients. Speaking of moving anatomically, you know, barrel racing can be hard on a horse. They're meant to run in a straight line. For them to turn a barrel, I mean, that's hard on them. This is Rio. She's my seasoned barrel horse. She's 19 years old. We were in Craig, Colorado at a barrel race, and she would run right into first barrel. This horse does not hit barrels. Well, what it was is it was her right stifle. She had a torn meniscus, torn ACL, and torn cartilage. So when I took Rio in, Lori Goodrich said, your best bet is try stem cell. Rio actually was the first stem cell recipient in the meniscus for CSU. Even if she never ran another barrel through all that surgery and stuff, I didn't care. I just wanted her to be pain free. So if that's all she did was stand in the pasture and eat, that's what I wanted for my real girl. She gave me a lot. She's just kind of our little miracle girl. We're at the tip of the iceberg. We won't have it all sorted out by the time I retire, but it'll, it'll carry on. I say that my 
my advancement in career research has come from having a whole lot of good students and trying to keep up with them. If you pull back and look at all the equine work that CSU is noted for, it's not just veterinary medicine, it's equine sciences. I think the largest program in the world for undergraduate equine sciences. Equine Reproduction Laboratory, which has been at the forefront of reproductive techniques in the horse, and that's carried on into humans. The surgeons here at CSU, there's a long history of, you know, very innovative people in the surgery department that have been at the forefront of innovation in the last four or five decades. I think the, the people here that have been through this program have, have been the, the key part of what distinguishes it from other programs. By entrusting the future of the horse to the veterinarians, scientists, and educators at CSU, we have in turn created a better future for ourselves. Sailing across the prairie Through the sagebrush and the pines With a friend God sent me In a sunrise state of mind You've come down through the ages From myth to fields of war Been a friend of mankind's labors And the conquering of shores And so much more Your majesty in movement our thundering hooves, we've watched you so. You carried boys to manhood and touched a woman's tender cold forevermore. You've given all we've asked for. Ask nothing in return From royalty to guns The cattle trails we've run Your own display to earn your pay Our partnership is one Sailing across the prairie Through the sagebrush and the pine On a friend God sent me 
in a sunset state of mind. 